Right now, it's time to welcome our first guest, Dr. Susan Kraus Whitbourne. She's a professor emerita of psychological and brain sciences at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. She's also the author of the popular Psychology Today blog entitled Fulfillment at Any Age. Dr. Whitbourne is also the author of 16 books, including the bestseller, The Search for Fulfillment, Revolutionary New Research That Reveals the Secret to Long-Term Happiness. She's also a frequent commentator on local, national, and international media outlets, including The Today Show, NBC Nightly News, Dateline, CNN, and many others. Susan, welcome to The Income Generation. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. So I know you started at a pretty young age uh, with researching this concept of aging gracefully, which you know, usually when you're at a young age, you don't think about that type of thing. What was your biggest motivation to get into this field in the first place? I just became fascinated with the topic. I was in college. It did seem odd. Not many people were studying this field. But um, I also had exposure to older adults in nursing homes, and I just got really fired up about the way older adults were treated, and I wanted to try to change the world. Hmm. So what do you think are the top contributing factors then to aging gracefully? Absolutely physical health and wellness in a very broad sense. We can't control all the chronic conditions that can afflict us or everything that life throws our way, but we can try as much as we can to maintain our physical, emotional, mental stamina. So I think that's really important. You can't be free of disease or illness, but you can really uh, give it a good hard try. And then I think attitude is part of it, being kind of optimistic about aging, looking at all angles, but at the same time, and as I found in my research, kind of focusing on the positive, but being prepared for what other uh, kinds of experiences might come your way, which might not all be that positive. So staying in good health, exercising, doing things like that is something that to some degree is within our control. I uh, have positive yeah. mental attitude, that's within our control. But how much of this is just from chemical changes within the brain as we age, something like that that's just outside of our control? Well, there are those little uh, things that can go wrong in our neurons. Um, we can get uh, things that get cut in the wrong place and causing neurons to malfunction and some things to clump up in the brain. But a lot of research has found that there is not a direct one-to-one -one correlation between even these chemical changes or neurological changes and people's behavior and mental state. So. Uh, education, keeping your mind active, and participating in things that you like to do will help to offset even those kind of uh, little attacks that can occur on our brain cells. And some of this, I, I can't help but wonder if it's societal. You know, there's some countries, especially in the East, uh, where the older you become, the more respected, the more revered. People seek you out for advice just on life, no matter what. And I think that I can't help but think that that gives people a great sense of well-being where it seems like in many cases now, because in the United States especially, you know, the family disbands. You don't have several generations in one house. And when somebody gets old, well, we'll just throw them in a nursing home. So how much of it do you think is societal? Are there different parts of the world that are having better success with this? I, th I think you're right that there is a lot that is a social context. I, I'm, I wouldn't completely agree with you about the families, though, as being necessarily the only kind of place where aging can happen well. I think it is a larger social problem. Ageism is rampant. It is everywhere. It is so loud uh, for people to make ageist jokes that um, really would not be allowed in any other sphere at all. So it's really hard to grow old gracefully in a culture uh, that is so rejecting of anything to do with aging. Um, and you kind of have to form your own determination to not let those ageist stereotypes get in your way. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. The, the you know, it, it's, again, it's a, it's a part of it's a, a cultural issue. Um, but it's interesting that you don't see a lot of it having to do with uh, the fact that we don't have, uh, you know, the Waltons per se anymore in our, in our society. But Susan, can you please stick around? We have a lot more to talk about after the break. What I really want to focus on after the break is I want to focus on the things that people can do to really stay sharp and the things that family members can do to support their elder loved ones with this goal. So you stay with us too. We'll be right back with more here 
Words of wisdom from Dr. Whitbourne on the income generation. I'm David Scranton. We'll be right back. Right now, let's welcome back Dr. Susan Krauss Whitbourne. Thanks for sticking around. So tell us, you know, what are some things that our loved ones can, that we can do for our loved ones that are aging um, to help, help them really age gracefully as the title of the show would indicate? I, I think number one is don't sell your loved ones short uh, because they're older. I mean, just as we discussed uh, social attitudes towards aging are still so negative and ageism is everywhere, um, that if we carry this into our relationships with our elder relatives, it's only going to bring them down and, and kind of create a self-fulfilling prophecy. So uh, on the one hand, you want to understand people's limitations, but on the other hand, you don't want to sell them short. And, and I think number two is, although, as you mentioned, the family, it's not the Waltons exactly anymore, many older adults do live within uh, close distance of at least one relative from a younger generation. And many of them have very close contact. Mm. And, and even if they can't be physically close, social media have really helped. So staying in touch with older adults, don't let guilt get to you, oh, I haven't called my mother, or grandma, in a couple of weeks, I better not call, I feel so bad. Get over it and, and make the approach if you haven't been approached already. So staying in touch and taking advantage of the many ways that we have to stay in touch now. And then number three is use opportunities to learn from elders. Uh, I mean, your show is about financial sure. advising. And uh, there's a lot to be learned from older, successful, retired adults, but there are also many skills that older adults want to share with younger family members, even if it skips a generation, as it does in many cases. And you're teaching the grandkids things that uh, you weren't able to teach your own kids. I think we just have to be cognizant also of the fact that if you're aging, if you're in your 70s or 80s, and some of your friends that you've known for many years, maybe they're starting to pass away, or get or become ill that that those are things that are emotional drains and to recognize that and have some empathy toward that also because you know that 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 is something that younger folks simply you know don't deal with as much but i've got to ask you social media has social media helped this cause has it hurt this cause absolutely helped. Mm. Uh, no doubt about it. And I know my own students, uh, I teach a, a small seminar on mental health and aging at, uh, I'm actually teaching at UMass Boston at the moment. And uh, we have a great time talking about their family members. Not only do they see them a lot, but they're, they're texting them, hopefully not during class, uh, but they're texting them, they're on Facebook with them. They love it. And older adults love it as well. And, and here's another area where where we could sell older people short. Oh, they can't possibly learn technology and we need granny. <laughs> but really, there are a lot of pretty sharp people who, who love it and help and helps them to feel more vitally engaged. Well, somebody close to me recently said that uh, that person thinks that his or her mom is alive today in large part because of social media and feeling part of something that perhaps she was missing out before. So. Dr. Whitbourne, thank you so much for being a part of our show. It's my pleasure. My pleasure too, David. All right, you stay with us. We'll be back here and after the break, uh, we'd have Dr. Kate Shanahan with us. We'll be right back on The Income Generation. I'm David Scranton.